Hello everyone, my name is Om Sai Gusol. Today I'm going to talk about how to connect Android with PHP in MySQL. And after that, I will show you how to read the JSON from the PHP and convert it to an object in Android and use that object for the list view, for the custom list view. And I will show you also how to read image from the URL I will create three activities, login activity, which I will show you how to do login from Android and send the data to PHP and test it whether it is true or not in the database. If, if it is true, then I will send the intent open the list activity, which uh, retrieve all the data from the record from the database and then pass into a custom list view and if we click on the list view we will move to the detail page and you can find me on YouTube user Om Sakasol which obviously you see the video right now and you can see the video actually a while ago I created a video about this as well but a lot of things changed in Android, so I decided to do it again. And you can also find me on Google Plus, Twitter, and Facebook page. And if you like this video, please subscribe for more video, and of course share to your friend. And if you have any comment, please drop down below. Okay, so first you need Android Studio, of course. And I recommend you to download the latest version of Android Studio. And you want to use an uh, emulator. Uh, I use Jenny Motion, which is very fast. You can use other as well. For example, people these days, um, they like to play games like Class of Plane. So you can have BlueStack on your machine already. So you can use it as well. But for the Genie Motion, it's free as well, and also you can have multiple screen at the same time. And to install Genie Motion, you need VirtualBox from Oracle, which is free. So you need VirtualBox and then Genie Motion Android Studios. So first, let's create a project. I will call it Android PHP MySQL. Use a blank activity and just choose main activity. And I want to point out also that in my description of any video, you can find a link to the source code. Okay, let me show you the version of this Android Studio. It's 1.5.1. If you use the older version of Android Studio, you might find this version a little bit strange because you will have activity main and content main all together. So for now, if you click on the activity main, you can see the layout of the component here is different from before because actually it's different and you can see this button as well. And if you click on the, the text, you can see the source code here you can see the include here which means that this is the main activity but then the content I mean all the button that you used to work in the activity main before is not stored in activity main it's stored in content main okay this is the new thing the activity main here is just like the layer on Photoshop you know like you have a layer on a layer upon a layer so this is the like a lower layer and then you can have like a content main okay and then if you want to drop a button you will use the content main let's see okay and if you try to okay now it appear as well but if you try to drop here it will not allow you to do that and the only thing that uh, it has here is a floating button okay you can see because of the new design of um, Google app especially 
you will see a button here, a play button or maybe add new button. You will have this button all in uh, Android app. So the Google introduced this idea to the Android as well. Okay, from the main activity here, you will see this additional lines of code because it for the the floating button here. Okay, the second ten main is still uh, use the activity main, and then activity main, as you can see, there is include, uh, and we'll include the content main. So the content main from here. We'll go to activity main and this one we'll call the activity main. So first we have to test our application. Now I use Jenny Motion. So if you don't see this, there should be a, a link here that uh, needs you to, to sign in. And you have to sign up from the website. You go to Jenny Motion and sign in from the internet from the website. And then after that, you can sign in here. This is my username. And then the, this emulator will allow you to download um, like a, a hardware, you know, but it's just like an emulator. But you can use Note 2 or Sony or, you know, for now I use Note 2, which is uh, the old one. It makes our emulator run faster and the screen is smaller. So I started already in here so test our application first okay the first time that you run from the Android to emulator it should be very long because it's the first launch okay now we see the application it's good to go so now we want to access to the to the website so first you need to ask Android for our permission so you go to Android manifest in manifest folder. If you cannot see this, because maybe you are in the project perspective, so you need to switch to Android and you can see the Android manifest here. What you have to do is uh, add a line and you say use this permission, Android permission internet. So it should be outside the manifest, okay, and outside the application. It must be here. And then you want to access to the internet. Um, you can use another library. Now this day they use Volley. But for me, I want to introduce my library. I call it PowerSpawn Axing Task, which I use Axing Task, obviously. You can go to github.com gig. You can see generic action task version 2. You should not use version 1, you should use version 2. What you have to do is download this and then you only need the gen action 1.2.jar. Okay, so I already downloaded. This is the library. You can copy this file and go to Android Studio and you go to project and you see the app and you go to lips and right click and you paste in the lips folder you can rename it if you want but just ok if you don't want to change and right click it and add as library So this is the way that you want to add a new library, like a jar file library to Android Studio. And you can check it. You go to Android and you go to uh, Gradle script. There are two, uh, two builds, but you have to go to build.gradle module app. Then you can see the compiled files. It means you add to the project successfully and you can test it and if you don't know how to use that you can refer to the readme in github okay there's a lot of documentation here to use that we call post respond action task and you can call a task maybe task one like this and Create a class like this. The first argument 
is the contact it means which activity you are on so I'm now on main activity so main activity dot this the second one you can pass asking response which is a, a interface and this is the result it means you will retrieve the data from the page that you want to and the second one you can uh, disable the show loading message just put it as a form you can post the data as well as the hash map and also post the data but then you don't want to show the loading and as well the loading message and the last one the hash map and then the loading like you want to say oh reading data something like that and then you call the action response so for now you want to call only the action response so I said new action response so there should be a suggestion double click on the suggestion so here is the the place that you can retrieve the data so for now I just use toast so this one is in the anonymous class action response so you cannot call this you have to say main activity like this you have to refer to the name and then you can I'll call the s s is the result and then say lang long like this lastly you have to call execute and which one which which page so let's say I want to call to local host so let, let's call this one so normally on a browser you can call localhost like this but this emulator has localhost as well so you have to change to the host localhost so there is a IP for that so if you use the Android emulator you call 10.0.2.2 but I call it from the uh, Jenny Mosen, I have to change to number 3. So this number is the alias, which is like 127.0.0.1 in the computer. Okay, so let's test it. Okay, now you can see all the HTML is in the result. I want to point out also that if you use another port, for example, now I use port 80, which is a default port, but if you change to like 80, 80, something like this, okay, then you have to change to port 80, 80 in here as well. But for now, I use port 80, so cancel it. So I can just omit the port. Okay, now let's create a, a project. So if you use WAM, you can just go to WAM. And for now, I use Zem. So you go to htdocs and I create a folder it's called customer. And when you create a folder on Mac, especially, you have to give the permission. You go to get info for Windows. It doesn't matter, you don't have to give a permission like this, but on Mac you have to do. So you have to give the permission to everyone, read, read only. And you have to give a password. And you click here, you have to apply to enclosed items. Otherwise, user cannot access your file, like image or PHP at all. So click apply, OK and then close it. That way it can give your user permission to read your, your files here. So to speed up our project, I have already created all the files necessary for that. So the first one is maybe login. You want to post data to the login. So I use the index as default page. So drag to brackets. If you don't know brackets, Brackets is an open source text editor by Adobe. So I prefer open source. So let's 
give it a try if you want to. So the code here is very simple, like you have HTML here and you have uh, in, input txt username for the text and uh, input password for the password, I call it txt password here. And when you click a button login, which is the submit button, it will go up because I use the accent here. This is the like a recursive uh, calling page. So we'll loop here. And I have to use the if is set here. If the data is not supplied, it will skip this code and go to the HTML. But if you supply the TXT username and TXT password, you will read the data from the polls and then assign to the username and password and select the data from the database. You have to use a single quote because it is a uh, string. Password is also the string. And here I use my SQL line. So you give the connection. I have the connection as well. So localhost root and uh, password is blank and the database is customer. Let's go to the database. So this is the database. I have a product and a table username. Okay. So now we talk about the username. So UID username and password. So I have ABC123 Kosol and Kosol. So if you give a username Kosol and password Kosol, so there should be a record. So it must be uh, greater than zero, it means uh, it's successful. So I call exit here because I want to exit from the HTML here. So let's test it outside. So I call, let's say, Kosol and password Kosol like this. Okay, so there will be a message success. And if I type it wrong, so we'll say wrong password, okay. Then you can use this data for the Android. So we call customer because this is our project. And this is an index page. So just call like this, it's fine. Run it. Okay, now you can see the, the data here. It's like HTML because in our web page, there is an HTML here, something like that. So now you can read data from here. And I want to point out as well, if you don't want to show the data in the post, but then you want to, to test data, you can just call log and you can call i or d if you want. And you can give the final string here. Okay, if you want to show the data in the log, you can just call log.d for debug and you can declare a variable, a constant as a final string and you just say log like this and you can say anything you want to that mostly um, people just put the class name in here it's easy to find and then the string that you want to test and this way you don't have to show the message in a toast because as you know the toast will show the message to the user but the log here will not so if you test again so in here you will see the text okay as you can see here the main activity but you can just go to debug as you can see when you choose debug and you type main activity you should see the data that you retrieve from the html page okay so this way you can do the debugs better and then you want to test the data so to test the data you can just use this class again but what you have to do next is to provide the data so you call the hash map here 
and then it should be the string string but if you don't want to specify the data type is fine and then just call source data new has map like this and then you put the data here it need two data it's a key and value so what is this when you go to the PHP page you can see there is a post here TAT username and TAT password so you need to pass the data from the Android through the post data here so you copy this and pass in here and then you give the data from here okay so let's test the data let's say I call Kusol here and you need to put the password as well and the text here must be the same and because we know that the password is also console so we can just give it as a raw data here so if you change the name here for example you change to just use a name like this you have to change to use a name as well so it doesn't matter that the HTML would change but the code in the PHP has to be the same to the Android okay so it must be the same so what you have to do is that you have to provide the second argument as the post data so the third one is the acting task okay so okay after you run you can see when you give the the text here is different from this one there should be a wrong message because the a set here only take the txt username and we provide from android as the username so it's wrong so you have to make it exactly the same now you can see that the text that you get back from the web page is success okay now is complete now if you want to test the data that you get back from the php you just call s equal success but the problem with the equal is that it must exactly success without space in the front or after sometimes you get the text back it contains some space so I suggest you to use contain but you have to make sure that in PHP page you have to have exit because you don't want to let the PHP run after this so exit will stop from here and exit the page okay so after I get the word success and it really success then you can call a toast and you can just say successful login okay so now we want to say that okay if it is success then you want to open another page which is the main page okay so first let's let rename it as the login page okay because this is not a main page it's a login page so to do that you go to java file and refactor and rename and I say login activity do refactor but there is something that is not changed is the XML file so you have to rename as well so I rename it to activity login so it is the style that Android use that the, the Java file has the name in front but the XML has a name after so I have to change content many as well and I want to have a text box that let user provide a username and password I go to content login and if you see something like this you can just click the refresh it should be disappeared but if you don't 
might be a problem with the IDE. You might want to update the latest one. So delete it. So I need a I need an email maybe or maybe just a, a plain text. Okay, you drag it like this. Second one is the password. And the last one is a button. You double click it and you can just give the text like login and then BTN login. And this one, double click on this and ET username. Yes. ET password. Check, don't ask. Yes. And if you want to give a hint, you just go to the property and you will find the word hint. You say enter username. Hint again, enter password. Now you go to login activity and then you call it by using find you by ID. So let's declare it outside. ET unlocking. At the text, ET is the name, ET password. Then username, cast it to at the text, all.id.et username, ET password. And lastly, it's unlocking. Then you click a button. So you set an event to that on click listener. And I don't use the anonymous class, just use a user class. So, so click on the red light and choose make login activity implement on click listener and click OK. Then you will see a new method here on click. So I will copy this text and pass it in here. Okay, now you want to provide the text. So you change here. So what you have to do, maybe first you have to change to the string. So I call username equal et username dot get text dot to string and another one string password and you do the same to password now change to username and change here to password so now you can provide the username and password from the login page Okay, now let's test it with the uh, correct password. Okay, successfully log in. What is the wrong one? Nothing because we don't have any else. So you want to provide else like this. And you say, okay, now try again. So in my last video, I got a lot of um, feedback on this because mostly people are not sure about their PHP. So I would like you to consult with PHP if you want to work with this because this tutorial is not for PHP, it's about Android. So, so I assume that you know the basic of PHP. So maybe you want to check it outside if it tests correctly before you go to the Android. And one more thing, if you can't log in here, I suggest you you go to home and you go to browser and you type it HTTP like this 10.0.3.2. And if you have a port, you have to provide a port. If you don't, just type like this. 
if you can see this page, it means you can connect to the host website. If you can, you can check the permission in WAM or ZAP. You can go to configuration and you can go to config file. And you can consult it with other website about this, how to open the permission. There might be a problem of that. So you have to make sure that you can connect it from here. For someone who has no problem with that, so let's continue with me. Now you can get the data like that, and then you want to open another page. So first, you need to create another page. You go to New, um, Activity, and then you choose Blank Activity. So now is the main page, but I will call it list activity. There's a new feature here. You can choose its parent. Let's say which parent you want to give an, a back button to. So can, you can just use the brown and you go to click. Okay. Let's say you, if you want to go to another page, you call intent class like this, new intent, and the source page. So is it login? Yes. So we'll call login activity as a source. We call this. And what is your destination? List activity, right? So class like this. And then you start activity in. So these two lines we'll open another class called list activity okay now type the correct password as you can see now we are in the list activity what i was talking about is this button it's a back button but actually it's called app navigation so as you can see, when you create a class and then you choose the hierarchy, so that is the default configuration for you. You can just go to the app activity. Okay, that's why they call app navigation. So let me show you what is the code that they added for you. So if you go to list activity, you can see this line get support action bar. It means that it support already that you can go back to the app page and if you go to Android manifest here if you go down to list activity here you can see this line parent activity name is login and also this two line also added so this two line is very important to support the lower version from 4.0 below if you delete these two lines, it only support from 4.1 up. Okay, so if you want to change, let's say you click back and you go to another page, so you have to go to Android Manifest and, and change this and also change this as well. Okay, so you go to list activity and then you want to add a list, so go to Content list here. Okay, you drag the list view down here. Okay, and then you drag to the full screen like this. If you want it to make a, like a full screen, you just click on relative and go down and then choose padding and Maybe just click here and then delete it. Then the list view will be up to the full screen. So now you want to read the data and then convert it into the object and pass it into the item. So to do that, you need a custom layout. But before have a custom layout, you need a layout. You go to new and you go to XML and you go to layout and you give a name so I will call it layout list so the layout should be the data from the database 
So you will have data from table product, PID, name, but you don't have to provide ID because it is the auto increment and it is also the primary key. You need only the name, quantity, price, and image URL. And you want to see the structure. It's an in, auto increment, primary key, and string here, and integer and float. Okay, so you need four. So you need the text one. So you need a plain text, maybe. Maybe just plain text here. And then an image. So the image usually has a problem because it's not visible. To make it visible, you have to go to text. And maybe you need to give the source name. In source, you provide the drawable, which is the image that already in the Android library. And usually I just call star big on. You can see here is a star. Okay. And in the design, also you can see the star here. This reason that you cannot drag to down below because you use linear layout. I suggest you to use relative layout. Now you can just drag like this and maybe another text. And then another one like this. Okay. So this one is a name. Okay. If you don't like it, maybe you just change it to the big one. Okay, I will show you how to do that correctly. Because relative, one object is led to another. So, so first you have to make sure that the text must be related to the screen, not to another object. As you can see, the arrow on the left, on the top, led to the screen. And then, maybe you can just drag down like this, it doesn't matter. And then the image, you want to um, like led to the screen and then to the text above, like this. And this text must be to the screen and uh, to the image, and this one to the line of the image. It's a little bit complicated at first, but if you work with it for a while, you will know how easy it is. So just change the text like TV name, and then IV maybe image, and maybe price, and TV quantity, and TV quantity, okay. So you need another library to take the data from JSON and then convert to the object, which is my own library. I call it KG JSON Converter. What you have to do is download it and you need the KG JSON Converter.jar. For now, I already downloaded it. Just copy this and you go back to project and you go to lips again and paste it here right click and then add as library and then you need another library from google it's called json and you can go to google and type json and you should find this grabcode.com and if you see the, the page like this, it's right, and then you go to here and then click download. It's on 2.2.4. Now I already downloaded it, so copy this and then pass it here again. Right click at our library. And you have to make sure that the Gradle edit correctly. Okay, now it's already edit. So you need the data. So you have to 
use the post action task again here. So go down and then we call post response action task and I call task three new post action task and then you provide the context no not then you provide the contact list activity but don't confuse with the library list activity just use list activity in here actually you just call another name is better if you want to and then new action task So here you can read the data from the page. So task read of execute, but which page? So you have to go to um, PHP and create a page to read the data. I call it product. To read data and convert to JSON is very easy in PHP. First, you need to select the data and you can just order by descent, mean the last one at the first, and then my SQLI query, and then here is very important. You will create an array, and then read all the data from the result, and then you call the JSON encode. So this one magic line will create all the data into JSON and you want to test it in php you go up here and you call product and you will see the json text here so you need to, to read the data from there so http 10.0.3.2 customer product like this and then you test the data by call log.d then you might need to declare final string log list activity like this log and then s okay first you need to log in and you go to the list activity and you change from main activity to list activity now you can see you already retrieve the json tags so next you want to convert the json tags okay in here you call my class but you need another class to wrap all the object from the json so you need a class a java class actually new and I call it product. So that product has to have the property exactly the same to the field of the table. And the JSON needs you to declare it as public. If you're familiar with Java, Java has a setter and getter, but for the JSON part, JSON doesn't need a setter and getter, so you have to declare the public. Okay, so this one is integer, that's PID, and then public string name, and then you need to tell it serialize name, okay. So as you can see now, the annotation is from JSON and you have to provide the name exactly to the field. Like this, if the field is PID, serialize name must be PID, must be name, okay, QTY, price, image URL, exactly the same. And after that, right here, you can call my library. If you don't know my library name, you just go to the project and go to JSON and you can see the class called JSON Converter here. 
And if you want to see a documentation, you go to my GitHub. If you want to see my documentation, you go to my GitHub. And then you can see here how to call it. There are two options. One is a release and one is a list. So if you want to take it, just copy this and then pass it in here. Okay, so the model class should change to product. And here product. So now the JSON string is the S and the product. So it will create an array list for you right here. But because it is in the anonymous class, it's a little bit difficult to call the user list. So I want to do it in the regular class. So I call it this. Okay. And make it implement the method like this. So this way I can use user list better by just call like this and then go up here and call private user list like this. Okay. And then after that, you need to add to the custom uh, list view. To make a custom list view, you need another library from Amigo. It's called Fundapta. To do that, you need a Gradle, but I don't recommend you to use this line because there is a bug in here. You go down, and then there is another line here. It means the older version. There is a bug in there, but I will show you how to fix it. And you go to Project, and you change to Android, go, go to Gradle, and then add the line below click on sync now so you can see this the icon of your application is IC launcher which is the one that conflicts with the library of him so to solve this problem you go to Android manifest and then you add another line here you call XML as namespace and tool and http schema.android.com slash tools and down here in the application part you call tools replace and then you call and then you call android colon icon so this should solve the problem as you can see now there is no bug anymore his library is very useful but except the bug so you go back to list activity so in this document you can see how to do that as you can see now you have to have a class okay, which is similar to mine you go down here you call the bind dictionary what it does, it will insert the data that you get from the JSON into the layout list over here. If you don't use his library, you have to create a custom class, which is a private class, and then you call the get view, and then you have to have the view holder, you know, this kind of thing. It's happened again and again. That's why I introduce this library that the bind dictionary will help you. I will show you. Over here you call add string and what you have to do is that you provide the ID of the layout. I'm sorry, the ID of the item in the layout. For example, TV name and then you call me name here and then what is the data so you call new and string extractor okay as you can see now the product will go to here you will understand the field that you create here you have to supply 
that which one will go to T rename. So you just return the item, okay? If you want to change to product, maybe it's better. So what is the data you want to provide to the TV name? Of course, it's the product.name. See, it's very, very easy. And then add string field, another one. And this time is TV price. Okay, new string. And then and then you provide it. Change it to product. Product dot price. The reason that it has an error because it it is a string. So you just add a string like this, and then just copy and paste. And here change to TV quantity and quantity. The last one is the IV image. So image URL. So now you don't need the string. Okay. But for the image, you know that it needs to load the data from the website. So for the image, you cannot just call add string field like this. You call it a different way. You call add dynamic image field and ID again, IV image. And then you call new string extractor again. And over here, inside the bracket, you give a comma and you call new and you call dynamic image loader. Okay. So first, it will read the data as a string and return it to here. So this is the product. And which one? It's an image URL, right? And then, this method will get the data from the return and pass it into the URL. And the view is the image. Okay, so it's very flexible. You can change, you can add to any field you want. So now I want to change it to image view. And I say image view, okay, and set. Um, image resource, but I will show you how to work with image later. And then you will call funductor, which is a main class. And then what is the class for that? It's product. And I call adapter. New funductor. It's similar to the array adapter. First, you need to provide the context, which is List activity just this, and then as you can see, it needs a uh, array list of product. Okay, so what is it? So we declare it here. Um, not user is the product list. Okay, product list. So next, you call the layout. So all dot layout dot layout list and the last part is the text. Okay? And then you can assign the adapter to the list view. So I want to declare the list view outside. Private list view LV product. So maybe I didn't give the name to the list view yet. Go to content list. Double click here. No, I didn't. So I have to call it LV product like here. Then LV product, cast it to list view, find view by ID, LV product, and then you call set adapter, and then you provide the adapter that you create it. Okay, password. Now we cannot see the result, might be some problem. 
okay maybe because we call it outside I just copy this one and paste it inside here okay paste it again okay quick password now you can see the data so we have to put the code inside the process finish okay so one more thing we have to load the image so there is a library you can use universal image loader and you can just go to google and type universal image loader and Picasso is a good one as well. So let me try Picasso. Picasso is a simple one. First, you need to add the gradle. Okay, sing now. So to get the picture is very easy for Picasso. This one, okay. So you go to over here. So what is the context? So the context is list activity like this. And the URL is correct and the view is the image view. As you can see now, you have the image. Okay, so you can just use the simple line of figure so like this. But if you want to customize, for example, like the size, you can just make a resize like this. If you want to transform the image to something else like circle or crop square like this, then you need this code. And there is some error if there is uh, something wrong, for example, like the image is not loaded, then you can call a placeholder. So you need this line of code, and you can just indent like this. Okay, you need this line of code. Okay, and because we don't have any image, we can use the Android library image by start the android.all then you can have a lot of image. As you can see, this is a image that if the downloading, then you can see the star. If something error, maybe that is the exclamation image. Again, log in. Okay. When you see the star, it's the default one. Okay. So that's all for Picasso. But if you want to customize more, you might need to read more documentation about this. And I will show you as well how to use the universal image loader, which is a very popular one. What you have to do if you go to quick setup, and then you can add the gradle over here. You go to gradle and add the line here and sing now but for universal image loader you need another permission called write external storage it means that if the image was already downloaded then it will cache so it needs the permission to write to the external one you go to android manifest and then add this line and also there is a configuration for the image and you go back to main page you go to configuration here and you will see the configuration and it says don't copy but then let's copy and then I will show you how to change it so first you go to Java file and I want to create a file for that go to Java okay and create a class called UIL config and create a method call config and the return type must be image loader configuration
and pass the code inside there. Okay. Okay, some of the code you may not need to just delete this four line. And this one also because you not, don't need to decode. And then you need to provide the context. Like this. Okay. Then you go to list activity. Let's comment this out. And then you go back to the page. Okay. And then you click useful. There is a line here. You need to initialize this line before you can use the image loader. You go back. Oh, some error here. Maybe you don't return it yet. So just return config. Okay, and then you pass the code maybe around here. Okay. And config here is our new class. Maybe we can just call static one. Okay. UIL config. Oh, because I did not create it inside the package, so I have to move it over here, drag it like this. Refactor. Yes. And then go back to the list again. Config. And then config, and you call list activity stop this, and then you can call the image loader. You go back to the page. So here is the code. Copy it and pass. This is the image URL, which is the URL. And then the image view. Um, you have to add this code, and you can find this in my blog, Casal Geek. And you can just go to the image loader using the universal image loader, and number two here. Yeah. And to the bottom, you will see that. Okay, and also because you want to, to add the display option. You have to call this method as well. Default display image options. There are a lot of configuration you might not understand, but this is the like a default code for the universal image loader. So if you want to do it correctly, you may consult with uh, GitHub itself. So a little bit confused for the first user, but then. That is the way it goes, okay? So it's the same thing. You can prefer Picasso if you want to, but if you want to config more, then you can use Universal Image Loader. Okay, lastly, I want to send the data to another page. I want to call it Detail Page. So, Blank Activity, Detail Page. And the hierarchy is list. Okay. So you go to content detail and you go to design. And then you can have a edit text for the name, for the quantity, for the price, and then the image. And for the image, we can have a text to edit as well. And also, we can view the image by using the image view. So again, we have to make sure it has some image inside. So go to over here, and Android source, Android drawable, star, speak on. So I want to drag it over here, okay, and then you need a button to update it if you want to, okay, over here, this 
189 80 price 80 20 80 image URL and this one IV image okay then you go to list now you want to add an event to the list so you go here and product set on item click listener this okay then when you click on that you move to another page so it needs a position of the item that you click this is the position then you need a product okay so product call it selected product and then the list of that so the list of that must be product list and you get position okay and then you call intent new intent like this tell page last and then usually you start like this but at this time I want to send some data inside there you call put extra and I call product like this and I send selected product there is some error inside here because you need to cast it to serializable and in the detail activity you can get the data by call intent like this and get serializable extra and it is the product now the product you want to get then you cast to product like this okay then this is the index so you need to declare the text outside and also image you First, you declare the edit tag outside, and then you get that like this. And then you just pass the data from product into this one. But first, you have to check the product is null or not, because sometimes you don't send it, so it might some have problem. Then you are good to go, and you can set text, and then you call product name like this. The same to other uh, the text, which is price. So don't forget to put the string here. Quantity. EC image URL. Image URL. And then you can call the Picasso or image loader for that. But let's call image loader because we already use that so you need this one line and maybe you declare it over here and change the name of the class and lastly you copy this code pass it inside here so the URL is the product image URL and then the image view is the IV image so log in again and click on it maybe the first one 
there is some error so we have to check it the problem here may be because of the name of the image let's check it out uh, because I name it as the TV so I have to change to IV run it again okay click again there you go okay now you got all the thing except the button here is on top of this so maybe if you want to change it a little bit okay let me change the image to the top and this one let me connect to this one Okay, let's click on this image. There you go. Now you got all the thing. Except there is no scroll to the button. Maybe we want to add the scroll bar. You go to the view. Okay, what you have to do is just to add this line, the scroll view at the top, and then the close tag at the bottom. Okay, run it again. Okay, click on this one. Now you can scroll, okay? Okay, that's it for today. So in the next video, I will show you how to update the data, how to delete from the list view, and how to add new data. So for now, I want to say goodbye, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.